What up, y'all? If it's Wednesday, that means it is time for the Wednesday Black People Parenting Block Party. <laughs> what up, gang? I'm Showtime. I got the squad with me. I got the team with me. The Black People Parenting, your favorite cousins, cousins. Samantha Alexander is here. Hey, Sam. What up? What up? How are it's you? Wednesday. I, I'm I'm okay. I just got off the island. I showed y'all earlier. Just, just working just, on my private island. It's in right. my kitchen, but you know. Right. Sure. Right. Semantics. Those so are semantics. Why? Why do they have you working from home? Why are you not going into the office? You know what? I uh, I elected to work from home this week. Oh, okay. So you chose. I the told office. yes. I told um, you know, Ma- I told Master. emailed my manager. I, right. right. <laughs> I emailed my manager. I was like, look, last week was real heavy. I was like, I'm gonna work, but I'm gonna be in pajamas or I'm gonna be in sweatpants and no socks on. So, mm. and she was okay with that. It's, and I'm taking a PTA PTO day on Friday. So as you did, me too. I'm actually I'm doing done. Hmm. I am tired. I had hmm. a hard week last week, which is why we didn't have block party because everybody was crazy. Right, 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 right. Well, glad you're here. Glad you're here. Uh, Dr. Tiffany Wiggins is in the building. Hello, Dr. Wiggins. That's me. Hey. How are you? Fresh off of a trip from the eye doctor? Yes. The ophthalmologist. Morning, y'all. So make sure y'all get your <laughs> the other DR. I don't want the other DR. 2020 vision because right. still, you sure should go. What um, did they say at your appointment? Oh, they said the things were looking good. I have a freckle in the back of my eye. So I'm sorry, a what? To, a who? A freckle, a freckle. A freckle, like a freckle that you get on your skin? Yeah. Well, there's one in the back of my eye. It's been there for a while, so they're just like, let's monitor that. So that's where we are. But does it, it block your grown... vision? Say it again. Does it block your vision? It does not. I don't have no idea. The only reason I know that I have it is because I go get my annual eye exams, and they do a retinal screen or whatever, um, and they've seen it back there. So, but I haven't had an eye exam in about twenty years. Oh well, that's the problem, sir. But, are um, you serious? Yes, probably why not. But I wow. can see perfectly fine. It's not about that. What they is can, it about? They can tell a lot about your health from your eyes. From your eyes? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like what? What can it? Well, like what? Your blood pressure. I go um, to the doctor di- for that. What are you talking about? Diabetes. Um, they tell me yeah. all of that at the regular doctor. What do you mean? Oh, my gosh. Okay. Go, go, to, go to the eye doctor. <laughs> it's very important. I've, I've never heard someone say, go to the eye doctor to get your blood pressure checked. I'm not saying to get your blood pressure <laughs> taken. I'm just saying. <laughs> what the hell? Exam. Go to the eye <laughs> doctor to get your blood pressure checked? No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> You're not listening. <laughs> I'm saying from your eye exam, what? they can, they can, is a good indicator if there's other, some other health issues going on. So hmm. you have pressure behind your eye. There could be a right. tumor in your, like, it could be all sorts of things that can okay. be shown. Cause I'm I'm the type of person like whenever I get a new job like I always decline the vision insurance like what? it's like two dollars I need that I need all my coins like, I need all my coins like no you need your vision is what you need I do, <laughs> but I, do, I don't I've made it this far in life so but I guess it's important I, it's your time like for yes. real stop it <laughs> people saying, are watching Did I'm keeping it real this hey this is my truth I, y'all can do what y'all want to I do. understand that this but... is me living in my truth if I can okay. if I can't come here and have a safe space. Where can I go? I I, historically, that, but... I I declined the vision insurance. Okay, I'm just saying. Well, at the next um, open enrollment, I need you to go ahead and uh, <laughs> and get that because it's two dollars. I mean, usually it's like two dollars. So why is it so cheap? Well, it's it's because you don't get a lot of coverage. First of all, hmm. you, you do have. There's a lot of ancillary charges that yeah, are outside of that. You get your but exam you get, free if nothing else. Prepared. A pair of glasses every two years, at least for us. I mean, yeah, you know. And if you don't, you know, try to go Ferragamo or MCM, you good, hmm. right? Because the people in my house, they're always trying to like at the end of the year use up their their, their FSA money, yeah, and and going to get like new fancy glasses and stuff. So mm-hmm. yeah, uh, I'm confused. Like what are we? What are you just, <laughs> first of all, I'm never going to wear glasses. That's the first thing. I'm never going to wear glasses. Um, and I don't see, I don't ever see myself putting contacts in my eyes. So I'm cool. Um, so yeah, enough about me. We learn so much every time. Every right? time. You, you all, sh- y'all have to start sharing stuff. Like, I, I feel like, shake my head. I, I mean, feel, I, just, I feel I like I, my life is an open book. I don't mind sharing. I feel like you, you guys have to start sharing some of these stories because I you did. Know, I went to that doctor. I helped. You did. Come on, y'all. You did. Um, okay. Oh, and I have uh, a black optometrist, a black man. Really? You yeah. know, 
And that, that's very important because number one, I am a, a firm believer. Like I only go to black uh, women service, provider. service providers. Nobody else. Yeah. No, nobody else can touch my teeth. Nobody else can uh, sit down and have me on the couch and have me pour my heart out to them. Nobody can 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 check my blood. All that stuff. Like all of my service providers are black women. I don't believe in anything else. Um, that is my you just, goal. You, you just breeze past one of the things. What you just said. <laughs> Huh? Can check can check my what? Which ones? Okay, never mind. <laughs> who's who's checking your eye health though? Which black woman is doing that? Well, recommend me a black woman and I'll go. How about that? Well, when uh, when I'm open enrollment when open enrollment happens, I'll go. Because as of right now, I don't, have, up. I don't have insurance. <laughs> Coming up in November, <laughs> open enrollment. Right, right. I'm I'm sure that listen in the comments, y'all feel feel free. We're just getting started, but feel free to comment and give us information on. I know do I'm not you, the only one who doesn't. Do you have. get your eyes examined annually? <laughs> Let us know. <laughs> That's the real it. question. <laughs> Listen, when I go to the doctor, they put they put the thing in the eye and you look at the chart and it's F G K E L M O S. That's, That's it. Not enough. Do they puff? Do they put a puff of air in your eye? Do they do well, that? What, what's do they that? do the little eye pressure test? Right. <laughs> exactly. No, they yeah. don't. That is no, no clue what y'all are talking right, you about. You go to a specialist. Never experienced. Shout out to Dr. Danielle Jackson over is here. She, Jackson I. Yes, yeah, she is. Danielle Jackson. She got to be black. Mm -hmm. Um. Huh. Okay. Well, I go um, to a black man, black so man. I do ch also try to have black women as most of my service providers. However, my eye doctor and my dentist are black men, so I do try mm -hmm. to be black, if nothing else. But yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, hey, that's great. Um, Wednesday wins. Let's talk about that. I will start with Samantha. Other than being able to work from an island in your kitchen for <laughs> the last couple of days, or was it, was it just today? No, it's been all week. All it's week, okay. All week. Uh, I need a win. Give me a win, please. Oh, y'all know what? And it's bad. It's bad. But I think, win. I think, right. <laughs> I believe she told me she did. I, I think I convinced my daughter to break up with her boyfriend. Oh, this sounds juicy. I want to hear about it. Let's see what happened. What? So, <laughs> so listen. So listen. We've been talking a lot about respect to her. I've been. I, we've been talking back and forth a lot about respect and being able to to ex to know what you're willing to accept and know what you're not willing to accept. And uh, you know, a little boyfriend be talking a little crazy to her, mm -hmm. right? And I said, well, before I get into it, I just want to know how does it make you feel? And you know, we had a long conversation. Well, we had a long conversation about, you know, you know, to what you what you can tolerate and why would you want to be at 20 years old in a miserable relationship? Mm -hmm. You 20, first of all, it's hot outside. Yeah, you got to wait till 45 to get into a You're living your best yeah. life. Okay. Yeah, at 45, that's when you get into I mean, you at some point you settling, right? But you you 20, you're not settling right now. <laughs> They don't settle it at 20. You wait till you're 45. So, That's when you settle. So, yeah. So, just just between us, right? Just between us. She she sent me a screenshot of a text message that she was getting ready to send over to him. Like, mm -hmm. Get him out of here. This ain't working. Get him out I of said, there. well, you have to tell him. You can't go around the subject. You have to tell him exactly why. I, I'm, I'm not continuing this relationship because one, two, and three. Right. right. If you have three or it can be just one. And she I, she she said she sent it. And then she went out with her homegirl today. Uh oh, you know, uh, you know how that is. Mm. I've and, been to and, it. and it's hot outside. Uh, and it's hot outside. Ooh. I mean, it's hot. It's 90 degrees today. Homeboy yes. in trouble. That's it. Trouble. It's a wrap. I'm like, sorry. Sorry, little man. Fingers so, crossed. So, so does he, does that's, that's a win to, for me. Does he ever come over to the house? He has come over to the house. Um, he has he has been over to the house a few times, and he's respectful to us. Mm -hmm. That's the thing I said. But you know, if someone is constantly showing you that they are not being, um, they they won't respect you because they've decided that they will not respect you. They're showing you who they are. Mm -hmm. So you gotta you gotta just you know you gotta make decisions on how you want to live your life. Mm -hmm. So she might be back with him in two months. But for today, but for today, that's a, that's a, that's a win. I won. That's you won. You won. Great job. Round of applause. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Good job. Woo -woo.
Round of applause. And I'm proud that y'all have a good like a relationship where she'll send you the text to be like, right. well, mom, look what I'm about to do. Right. It didn't used to be like that. And and that's that's one of the that's one of the takeaways of having, you know, older children now. It's it did not used to be like that. You know, yeah. kids get to a, a, a stage where they don't want to stay. They don't think you can handle or they don't think you understand what's been going on. But this world been spinning for a long time. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. everything that they doing, they just the only thing they doing different now is they got cell phones. Because mm. right. yeah, so. this one I got upstairs uh, right now with me, uh, mm-hmm. there ain't no way in the world she going to text me uh, about any any sort of relationship dealings. Oh, I got to I got to play inspect the gadget on social media just to find out what I think might be going on. I got mm-hmm. You got to put you got put two and two together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to I got to sneak around <laughs> on the Twitter and on the on the It's hard out here for a dad, man. But like mm-hmm. you said, hopefully, you know, when they get to be a certain age that mm-hmm. uh you know, you you've instilled that trust in them that they can come to you and and have conversations with you about anything. That's what I you know, I tell mine. I'm like, "Yo, like you ain't doing nothing that I ain't already done." And I, I guarantee I did it a whole lot better than you doing. And for so, some reason, they don't understand that. Let me put at, you at on that age. Game. Oh, at that age, they do not understand. They're like, nah, you stupid. You, you, know, ain't, you ain't never did you this. Old, you know. uh, right, right. I'm like, let me no. let me put you onto the game. I'm, let me show you how to run the play. Like, okay. uh, let me show you okay. how to run the play. Like, I'm the coach. You run the play. You know, <laughs> my playing days is over. Let me show you how to run the game. But hey, okay. you know. Save you a lot of heartache. That's it. That's that's it. That's it. But you know, you a hard head make a soft hind pot. That's all I can say. Mm-hmm. Uh, Doctor Wiggins, any wins for you this week, ma'am? Um, I have a win in progress. So okay, okay, okay. Um, let's, let's bring it on, on bring the, it on. On the on the career job front. Um, Wait a what? <laughs> what? I you, said on the on the career front. Like okay, go ahead, go ahead. Because like, you know you get it. You know, you get it. You know, yeah, no, it is. It definitely is. But oh. you know, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't never been scared to leave a job. So, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> you, know, you, you get one thing that about is you. true. One Let me go ahead and say this real clear to everybody. <laughs> I am only loyal to Tiffany, Doctor right. Tiffany Wiggins. That's who my lo- that's right. where my loyalty is. I heard that. I'm gonna go ahead and clear. say that yeah. really quickly. You ain't never um, been scared to leave no job. <laughs> Why? Why stay miserable if you don't have to be? Right. In this, this case, is I am not, that is not the case here. So let me let me go ahead and put that out there. But hey, if it get to be that way, I don't mind That's what it checking is. the right. But anyway, I've been with the company for about a year and a half, and they've allowed me to do a lot of great things. But like, it's a lot of it's a lot of stuff, right? So I'm at a place. I'm in a place where I'm having conversations where I think people are like seeing like okay Tiffany's doing like a whole lot of stuff but like that's not reflective of her job like of the job that she was actually hired to mm-hmm, do mm-hmm. um so I had a conversation with my COO today who actually called the meeting with me we were talking to talk about something else but in that meeting he basically was like what do you want to do write it up right like let's figure this thing out so mm-hmm. that's why I say it's a win yes. in progress because okay. nothing has happened just your own job description yeah. right what you can but, call yourself <laughs> So I'm trying to figure out, Sam. That's that's the issue here is because I don't come from the tech world, right? I'm still mm-hmm. like trying to figure out the like organizational piece of that. Um, but at the same time, everybody's like, "We're startup. Like, just make it up. Like, mm. you know, like it don't have to be C-suite. Right. Go C-suite, please. Hey, okay. so which we are lacking some diversity at that level. Surprise, surprise, right? Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. May not be a bad idea to to do that. So yeah, so that's my homework for this week is to come up with a job description for myself. And and we'll see that let, I go. let me say this. First of all, if you if you have wins in the comments, please let us know what they are because we want we want to share y'all wins too. But to Dr. Tiffany Wiggins' point, like there's nothing like having um a place of employment where you feel valued and you feel appreciated. Mm-hmm. Like that will totally change the trajectory. Um, of like what you do, right? Because you know, like you're 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 like I, I think that you are probably you know doing all of these things that aren't in your job description because you feel like those people value you, right. and I think you know you you feel like the the work that you're doing like you're seen, and I exactly. feel like there is nothing um, better than that in the workplace. There's nothing better than that. Like I, I, I battle with all the time. Like, you know, would I ever see myself going back into radio, mm. right? Like, would I ever do radio again? And honestly, I don't know because 
I feel like in the 20 years that I was in radio, I didn't I didn't feel like I was valued. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like I was great at what I did. Um, and I feel like the world as we know it has changed to where as companies are now offering unlimited PTO, they're running like all of these things, you know, that that make it like, okay, this is good really for attractive. you. Right. Uh, attractive. And, you know, just from what I hear and see about people in radio, like, nah, they're not, they're yeah. not doing that. They're not doing that. Um, yeah. So why would I, even though, like, even though that's a passion of mine, like, why would I put myself in a position to go back to that where right. I'm not valued, where I'm not, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I think once you get a taste of that, like, of, of the other side, right? Like where you don't have to feel like you're not valued. Cause that was me, right? I came from higher ed. That's my background. Love it. Got a whole PhD in it, right? <laughs> like mm-hmm. I know that world, but my day-to-day work, like I didn't feel valued. And I think that's part of why I end up coming over here and now I'm doing all the things because they allow me to do all the things. They're like, oh, you're talented in this way? You know, sure, be on this project and do this. And I do it, but at some point, you got to like reel yourself back and be like, okay, like who's winning here? Right. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny, I was reading an article earlier and it was talking about, they called them, what do they call it? NPTs, not NFT, or in, yeah, NPTs, like non promoting tasks or something to that effect. Right. Cause mm-hmm. there's like, you, people go to work and they do these things and mostly it's women, right? We do all these extra, extra things and it helps the company and it helps the team, but it doesn't help us. Like it doesn't put us in a position where we're going to get promoted. So we got to be like mindful of like, okay, who are we doing this for ultimately? So I appreciate that having been with the company in such a short amount of time. Like, yes, I've been able to like showcase my talents and, you know, get my hands dirty and projects that I, you know, didn't, you know, have any experience with before, but at the same time, I can sit down with my COO and, um, you know, like call a meeting and we can be like, have a real conversation about it, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, so that's my win in progress. Yeah. I, I like it. I, I like <laughs> it. Um, so for me, my win this week, I've had an interesting week. So Macy O. Parker has been, uh, sick with this. I guess there's a stomach bug or stomach flu that's been going around uh, with the kids for the last couple of weeks. So somehow he caught that. Like both of his teachers caught COVID um, last week. So they shut the school down. Like, nope. Mace had a, he had a, he had a fever for like one night and then he kind of bounced back. I don't know if he had COVID or if he did, if he didn't have COVID because we didn't actually didn't get him tested, but we've been quarantining because he has a hard time dealing with the COVID test. Uh, but he just he he developed this like stomach virus over the last uh, week or so. So uh, Isha has been kind of managing that and managing him in that aspect and making sure that, you know, he gets all of the things that uh, he needs in that space. I mean, like waking up at three o'clock in the morning, crying, just a whole bunch of stuff. So um, that is actually ending Right. He's coming. He's 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 rounding the corner to that as of today. Nice. Um, so that's a that was a small win. But my biggest win this week, my biggest win is that a 17 year old, her last day of school was yesterday. <laughs> last day. Of no more 530. <laughs> <laughs> 530 is done. Emoji <laughs> praise hand. Do you hear me? No more 530. <laughs> As of today, I heard that when I tell you I slept so good up until seven thirty this morning without having to worry about getting up, (laughs) making sure she was up, getting out the door, watching out for the deer on the road because it's so dark outside, getting to the bus stop, making sure we were there on time. I told y'all they moved the bus stop so it's further away from me. Coming Mm -hmm. back home, yeah, they had to move the bus stop. Coming (laughs) back home. That is not equitable. To, nah, nah. Coming back home, trying to get an hour of sleep, getting up, then getting Mace uh, out the door for school. No mm. more five. <laughs> I'm going to de- I, listen. I'm going to be so happy today. I'm going to delete that alarm <laughs> out of my phone and never put it back ever again. Listen. Last night when I went to bed, Jack, I said, "Yo, I feel I like the first day of school." <laughs> <sighs> Man, man, 
She went. I, her, I, I had to take up. her to work today. I, she had to work at eight today, so I took her to work at eight. And I thought I was gonna have to go pick her up from work, but she said, "Hey, uh, my my, my coworker is gonna take me, gonna bring me home from work because she want to stop at Michael's and do some shopping. Have at it. Have <laughs> at it." <laughs> <laughs> go, ahead, girl. go, 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 man! I, love it. I thought it was I gonna be, it. I thought it was gonna be sad because it was the last day. That's no, so sad. Oh, no, you I'm were just sorry. taking the funk online that you were sad. No, no, no I, I, I really was sad. Leading up to it, leading up, leading up to it, I did. I thought I was gonna cry yesterday. I honestly did. I thought I was gonna cry when I picked her up yesterday. I did not. Um, but this morning, I was gonna cry. Tattoo tears of joy. Because the Lord <laughs> made a way for me, to, and I never have to do it again. It, it, ain't God good? I never have to do it again. <laughs> Man, you talk about a testimony. Um, so, so yeah, that's my win. That's my. I know win. that's right. That is amazing. That is amazing. I'm that struggling. Next week, the last week of school, they get out on Thursday. I'm like, thank God. Mm, All I got to do is get myself up. No, I don't. She don't have to take. She don't have to take no exams. <laughs> She do nothing. Like she, she's Please done. Graduate and go to college. Graduation is Tuesday, um, at five o'clock in the evening, mm. and, and that's it. I got my, I got my yard more. sign. I got my yard sign. I'm gonna cut the grass this weekend. Put my, put my yard sign in the yard. We're done. We're yeah, done. We are here. It's amazing. Mm, she doesn't want to have a party, so okay. she have a trunk is, party or nothing for the beginning of school. Oh, who? Gotta do it. Gotta do a trunk party. What is oh, that? a trunk? I thought you said I a, a trunk party. I was like, well, this is a, this is this yeah, is are you in case? this is the house of the Lord. We don't celebrate no MAGA around here. I don't know what you're talking like, about. Like <laughs> trunk, but with a T trunk. <laughs> what is that? So a trunk party is where you invite people out and they have you know how you take a big trunk to school, right? Or it's totes now, right? But you fill you bring people people fill it up with stuff. Oh, never like, heard this, huh? oh, that's a thing down here. Oh, best believe you better do one. Start the trend. Hmm. <laughs> okay, hold on. How does this work now? You take a so you, so it's, it's a trunk party. So a trunk party, you know how you when you go to live on campus, you usually in your old school used to have a big trunk that you yeah, take to I school, still right? Have mine in my bedroom. Right. right? <laughs> foot locker, a foot locker. Foot locker. That's what they call it. Yeah. 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 Um, so you have a party and it's called a trunk party, and people bring things. Um and they to fill up the trunk, right? What so it could be like gift cards, it could be um, snacks, it could be toilet paper, paper towels, that type of thing. So like all types of things that they're gonna need in their dorm room. Right. Okay. So we didn't do that, but we did do an Amazon and Target gift list, Jank. Yeah. Okay. And we sent that out to friends. I didn't get family. that. I didn't get that. Just saying. Didn't? Okay, I didn't, well, I didn't get that. Say less. <laughs> Say less. <laughs> like the it'll, link is still active. Yep. Yep. It'll be in your inbox as soon as we get off here. <laughs> all um, right. Cool. So you know, with all of the you know all of the necessities that she needs and all and that I stuff on the this, list. This and yeah, like she, she. I need to. Yeah, I need to put it in, in the chat. If you matter of fact, let me. No, yeah, hey, hey. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time. Save it, save it for Friday. I'll, right. I will, for Friday. I will put that joint right in there. Right. Save it for Friday. Oh, right. Save you know what? Good, right, right. Good idea, Sam. Save it for Friday. Um, so, yeah. I'll so decline we, it. Right. Right. So, we did do that. So, uh, yeah, no trunk party. But she is, I, I believe she's, her her mom is doing something with her and some friends. Um, and But her birthday is, like, the following week. So, um, I'm trying to convince her, you know, not like she's real low key, man. She don't really, she ain't really into a whole lot, like you know. So she'll probably go out to den- go out to dinner with them, and um, we'll probably do something on maybe like the Friday before her birthday to kind of combine the uh, the uh, birthday and um, graduation. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. So all right, enough about us. Uh, let's talk about what we're supposed to be talking about today, which is this uh, formula shortage. I'm sure y'all have heard about this, this formula shortage that's been going on uh, across the nation. And we actually have a special guest. We're going to bring her on in just a second. But for those who don't know, I don't know how you could not know because of of social media, there is a baby formula shortage, right? And the baby formula shortage includes, you know, Similac, Infamil, um, what's another another kind? Uh, We used to use the Tramagen, um, oh, I, I, used, I used Equate. I used the Walmart brand. Equate. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So basically, all of that stuff um, is 
it's it's not able to be found right now. So we got a guest we can bring on. Her name is Maya Jackson. I'm gonna pull her up into the stream. Hey Maya. Hey y'all. Hey, How hey. are you? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Good, Maya. She, I, I told Maya before we got her voice is just so calm and just so <laughs> soothing now. I'm not used to this. Um, so Maya, let's let's run down your credentials first and foremost. Like, what do you do? Um, who are you? Let's talk about your nonprofit and let's just tell the people who you are real quick. Great. Um, my name is Maya Jackson. I'm the founder of Mom Made Inc., which stands for Mobilizing African American Mothers Through Empowerment. We are a community-based maternal health organization here in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, we work with Black, Indigenous, and Hispanic uh, birthing people of color and folks who are also historically excluded um, from age from pregnancy to uh, age five. And so we provide doula services. Um, maternal mental health services, emergency access with food, lactation consul uh, consultation, and um, many other resources that are lacking um, in our communities. Okay. Okay. So and, my, um, go ahead. I'm go sorry. Ahead. I'm a mama of four. I'm a mama of four. And ages, I have, ages, please. Uh, oh, ages. Uh, 14, 12, 5. And you sure? I had to count, yeah, because their sure birthdays are coming. Like <laughs> it's hard to keep up with. Yeah, after two, it's it's you're you're totally forgiving. If yeah, you're I'm just it, like y'all yeah. the same age. They're called yeah. Phil and Lil. I treat yeah. them like twins, and yeah. <laughs> that's how we run it. Um. So okay. So for those that don't know, the baby food. I'm sorry, the baby formula shortage. So the origins of the shortage. Number one, there's a huge. Uh, producer of baby formula that had a recall recently, right? That's how it first started. That's one of the things that contributed to it, uh, because two infants actually died from taking their taking this particular formula. So they did a recall. That's normally what happens. Like if people die ingesting your product, then there's normally a recall. Roll it back um, a little bit. Right, they got pulled back just a little bit. Um, but then, of course, you know we have to 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 include the supply chain issues that have been going on. Uh, of course, all of the ships that have been stuck in the ports and you know, all of that. And then, of course, remember, during the <clears throat> pandemic, there were people who were stockpiling um, formula because, of course, we all thought that the world was about to end. So people just like got tons and tons and tons of formula. Um, and then there's also like a little bit of politics involved. Right. So there's, you know, I, I read earlier today that Biden has uh, is, is doing something with the Defense Act and he's, you know, helping them to get more uh, formula produced and things of that nature. But Bottom line is, it's not enough formula to feed the babies, right? Right. Um, and I, Maya and I were, were, were on, on on my page, I believe, and we saw. First of all, let me say I love my people. I do. We are the most creative people on the face of the earth, and in times of trouble, in times of hardship. despair, yeah. hardship, we gonna we gonna make a way to find a way. So my people, and they my, they my people, I claim them, I don't have no problems, <laughs> have decided to, you know, start posting this recipe on Beyonce's internet. <laughs> and the recipe consists of evaporated milk, chiral mm -hmm. syrup, <laughs> um, water, and am I missing something? I feel like there's something else. I feel like mm -hmm. it's something else. I feel oh. like you're making Dulce de Leche at this point. <laughs> no, no, no. no, no. Right. They, as, of, as of yesterday, they started adding rice cereal to the recipe. Oh, oh I started seeing it. They, 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 they threw rice cereal in the recipe. So I, I felt it was important to have Maya on with us to discuss um, this and, 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 you know, just kind of go a, 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 kind of above and beyond and, and see if we can, can, can broach this topic to see what we can do to help people, um, figure out what's going on because I, and I understand that, you know, people will say that our, um, not even our ancestors, our parents, people who are 50 and older did this when they were birthing babies and, 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 and we turned out. Okay. Well, we turned out. Okay. We turned <laughs> out. Okay. <laughs> we, that's the key doctor. Lincoln. We <laughs> turned out. Okay. Um, so, so, so Maya, let me ask you this. As someone who works in the field and works with mothers, um, what are the what are the pros and cons of number one? Let's start here. What, what are the pros and cons of 
following information that you get online as opposed to uh, consulting with your pediatrician or your physician? Let's start there. One is very dangerous. Um, is. There's a lot of misinformation. Um, there has been a lot of evidence studied behind uh, what is best for babies to ingest because not all babies can take breast milk. Um, so some babies do need a uh, formula. And so we want to make sure that our families have the correct information to know what is possible for their babies to consume in a safe way that is not going to cause disruption in the gut or that could cause death. And so I would advise anyone that is struggling, trying to figure out what to do in this crisis is to speak with your pediatrician as well as talk to a lactation consultant. Um, I think a lot of times when people hear uh, an IBCLC, which is an international board certified lactation consultant, they think that these folks only specialize in what we now call human milk. Um, but it's really about infant feeding. It's making sure that people understand what is accessible, making sure that folks know the best options. Sometimes uh, when babies are feeding, it could be something biological going on, um, like with their, their tongue ties, or it could be something health related. So it's a little bit more than just giving your baby breast milk or formula. There's a lot of science behind it that a lot of folks don't know. And when people get in a panic, they, you know, go to someone in their family to get somewhat sound advice because that's someone that they feel like they can trust. But then if they don't have uh, that familiar network, then they go to the Internet as a source, which is just a spiral of misinformation. And there has been situations in which out of desperation, people have tried where there be these recipes or different techniques when it comes to birthing and people have died. Children have died as well. Mm. Yeah, I, will, I I had somebody on my on my Facebook feed, one of my friend's moms, uh, on that same post, Maya, that you were that you were commenting on, um, had had commented and said that you know she's been a, a nurse for years and she witnessed, uh, I think she said one or two babies died, not not during this time, but previously, uh, because the parents were trying to stretch the formula, um, and I don't know if they were. If, if you know if they were diluting it more than they should have, I'm not sure. Um, but these are the things that we don't necessarily think about when we are giving uh, sort of unsolicited advice. Um, and like I said, I love my people, I do. But we have got to understand that just because we see it on the internet does don't. not mean it's that not true. It's true. No, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's terrible. It's, it's, I love Beyonce it's, Internet. It's actually more dangerous for us as Black people to seek medical advice on the Internet because we're not easily accessible to get medical care in person. You know, so if in the event that there is harm done because you're following advice or recipes and you haven't spoken to an actual provider. And when I say provider, there are different type of providers that people need to see when it comes to this. Right. You go to the lactation consultant for the overall feeding advice, because sometimes pediatricians aren't knowledgeable about milk. They can kind of give you like a surface layer of what they've been trained, but it doesn't mean they're an expert. So it's always good to, to ask them what their background is when it comes to infant feeding. But then, you know, uh, when you start getting into gut health and, you know, why my child is crying because of colic and they're, they're gassy, those are the conversations that you want to have with your pediatrician, because these are things that are biologically happening based on how your child is consuming food. And a lot of times the information that we see is just a lot of misinformation coming from home. Folks are like, oh, well, you know, you need to thicken up that bottle because that baby is not getting enough milk. So when we think about breastfeeding, one, breast milk is completely different from uh, formula. It's not supposed to be thick. The baby's capacity of their stomach is just the right size for the little bit of ounces that they're supposed to get. Infant formula is different because it is a manufactured version of what milk is supposed to be. So, of course, it's not going to have the same type of consistency in it. But a lot of times what I've seen in our community is, you know, you get your auntie or your grandma. And they're like, oh, you need to put a little cereal in it. Well, that cereal creates a choking hazard and also expands the gut because it's not supposed to be in the milk. So, it, you know, it's just really important for people to do a little bit more 
work outside the internet because we want to make sure our babies are thriving and um and sustaining and not you know dealing with any type of demise because we missed information in regards to how we're supposed to be feeding them but the baby won't go to sleep <laughs> I knew you were going to say it. They didn't want to go to sleep because the baby on a different sleep cycle. <laughs> but, 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 but how am I? How, <laughs> so this is what our sleep, people man. need to understand. And it goes back to what you were talking about before. All of this is political. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is not just corporations having these drops. All of this is political. When you think about how black women came to this country as enslaved women, you know, we were bred to produce babies and go back to work. Mm -hmm. We didn't mm -hmm. have time to heal or recover. We didn't even have the chance to nurse our own children because we were the wet nurse of the slave master's wife. So there's already a genetic disconnect mm -hmm. from comforting and um, nurturing your child in your arms. So if we've been trained and taught that we're supposed to detach from our children. When you have your babies, those first couple of weeks, skin to skin, put that baby on their chest. They'll learn how to soothe over time because they know that you're supposed to be here. Our babies aren't supposed to be off in some room by themselves like this is medieval times and we got servants who are going to you know check on them from time to time it, it a lot of things that are happening with our community is because we have been conditioned to separate ourselves we have been forced uh legislatively to go back to work quickly like there was a time um after i think world war one where black women were at home you know, the family structure was together. Everything was all and well. And white women were like, hey, I can't feed my baby. I can't I can't go to my parlor and play bridge. Somebody got to come here and take care of this baby. Mm -hmm. So they passed legislation for black women to go back to work to do domestic work. So, again, we're detaching black women mm -hmm. from being a part of nurturing and comforting their children. All of that biological uh, deficit and separation plays into how we feed and care for our children. Then marketing comes in, pet milk decides, uh, there was a family in North Carolina that had quadruplets. And you know, white men, when it comes to medicine, love uh, doing what they do and exploiting people. So there was a doctor that found these quadruplets in North Carolina and said, we are gonna make you the face of pet milk. Why do you think our people know pet milk so much? Because they took them little black babies mm. and paraded them around on this human zoo. The mama didn't even get to name them little girls. He named them. Wow. So they're pushing pet milk in our community as the quick fix to feed your baby so you can go back to work. White women were allowed to nurse their babies. Only poor white women were using pet milk because they were forced to go back to work. So when we talk about um, why these things are happening, this is generations of a build up of um, political display, of white men pushing power to put people back in control. And when you think about how corporations operate, they didn't care. We've been having formula recalls. Like I remember my first child and we were on Enthamil, um, all the formula got recalled because there were bugs mm -hmm. in, the, in, in the powder. Mm -hmm. So everybody had to send their stuff back. And mm -hmm. luckily I was nursing but I didn't know my body enough to maintain producing milk. And so when you hear a lot of conversations about this argument, which I find is, is really frustrating in our community right now, a lot of, of, of us are attacking each other because you have the folks that are talking about breast is best and then fed is best. And we know that people have to decide what's right for them. But most of the time, our people choose formula because they got to go back to work almost four weeks after having a baby instead of being allowed a whole year to heal and nurture and love up on their child to get to know their bodies mm -hmm. to be able to produce their own milk. So a lot of the arguments that people are having right now about even breast milk is that, oh, I can't produce enough, enough milk. And so for us as professionals, our response is, well, did you see a medical provider? Did you speak to a lactation consultant? Did anyone tell you that there was anything clinically wrong with your body that you weren't able to produce milk at all? 
a lot of these things take time, they take rest, and it takes education and support. And currently the American system is not set up for any woman, not just black women, but for any woman to be able to have that opportunity to connect with their kids so that way they can nurture and feed them, especially when it's during that difficult time when we're talking about sleep. Everybody thinks something's wrong because the baby is whining at certain times at the night. They're supposed to do that biologically. It all settles itself out, but we've been told that something is wrong by the way that um, our babies are acting. And we, we introduce these things, sleep, uh, sleep experts and all these things to try to just modify <laughs> what is naturally supposed to happen. And I think right now what we're seeing, particularly with COVID, is just the bubble of a system that is not working for us. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I'm not in my head like with in total agreement because I can tell you that after having three children, the first one was all formula because I was 22 and like, I don't know what to do, right? The second one was 14 months nurse. Um, and then my last one was attempted. I mean, I really tried for the first three months. And then when I, as soon as I went back to work, it was just like stress. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much water I drink nothing happened. <laughs> so then she had to flip the formula. So, I mean, and I, I had just finished, you know, one, two and a half years later, I didn't even know what I was like, I got to buy milk. Oh, this is crazy. I, you know, so it was, it's very expensive. It's very, you know, and it's frustrating that when, when you can't and you want to. Right. And, and when you go back to work, most corporations in this country don't have a proper lactation room. Exactly. Executive. In the restroom. Yeah. Yeah. Bullshit. Yeah, I was nasty. so angry. Yep. <laughs> I was so angry. It's not adequate. It's not clean. I remember, you know, working for the government, but I had a lower level government job and my option was the janitor's closet. Wow. You know, it was the janitor's closet when I had my office mm -hmm. before I got switched over to a different department. When I had my office, it was great. I had my own private area. Mm -hmm. I could pump. No problem. Switch a different department that was mainly, you know, governed by men. It was like, oh, you need a space. Yes. Oh, you can use this room that we're not using. It was an unused office that the janitor was putting all his stuff in, mm. you know. But then you also have to think, too, about just we as a community, like you were saying, Showtime, it's just sometimes the information that we share with each other when it comes to these topics, particularly about feeding our babies. It's a lot of misinformation, but it's also a lot of shame. Most yeah. of us grew up with black women who did not nurse or feed their babies. So we had no representation to see what that was like. And mm -hmm. for those of us who are doing it, uh, we constantly have to deal with, oh, you, you don't want to cover yourself up. You don't want to cover that baby up. Do you cover yourself up when you're eating? <laughs> Hold on. You know, like our ancestors literally, <laughs> and if you want to go all the way back to Africa, they feed them babies and have them babies wrapped up on them all the time. When they go to work, them babies are wrapped up on them all the time. Mm -hmm. We create separation. We've been creating separation since we've been in this country. And I really feel like this is why we're, as a community, it's becoming very difficult for people to figure out what to do. Because we knew that these things were happening. This wasn't the first time that there was awareness that there was a shortage. We saw these things happening during covid you know, and and now I think we have to start having a greater um, conversation around what are we going to do if the shortage continues to lapse? How can we support people within the community to make sure that they have what they need and and to be supported throughout this process? Because one conversation people aren't quite having yet is that women as women, we can relactate. So even though your breastfeeding journey did not go well, uh, the first go round in the event that this doesn't get better, we should be having conversations about relactation and how we as a community will support those folks who want to do this to be able to support and sustain their families. So this this makes me think about the fact that, you know, I have an ongoing list in my mind of, and I must actually write it down, of things that are rooted in white supremacy. Um, I... Okay. Right, 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 right. I was not aware that this conversation that we're having, that um, the way that Black women nurture their 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 infants and their newborns could be traced back to white supremacy. It's 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 not something that I have thought about, um, but it is something that I will be adding to the list. 
Um, what about my uh, one of the things that I, I haven't seen a, a lot of people talk about this, but I have, and I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. What about um, and correct me if I'm using the wrong term? Uh, is there such thing as like breastfeeding banks? It is, is. That the correct term. It is correct. Um, the more inclusive language now is human milk because um, mm -hmm. we do have birthing people who do not identify uh, or acknowledge breasts, which is fine because it's still milk. Um, but there are uh, there are human milk banks, but a lot of times they are attached to hospitals, mainly to support infants who are born early, so premature babies. It is not as easily accessible um, from a community rooted standpoint. Um, so what a lot of times people will find, they'll go on Facebook and they'll find a milk sharing group. Um, with milk sharing, people need to be very cautious to do their due diligence to make sure that they get information on that individual's health make sure that they don't have any diseases or bloodborne pathogens that could cross within the milk. But it is possible to share milk hmm. um, with each other and get it sourced from the community in which you live in. Yeah. Is there a stigma attached? G generally, is there a stigma attached to that? Um, yeah, in our community? Um, it is like so I in I've nursed four children. If my sister friend needed me to nurse her baby, I would nurse her baby with no shame. Um, one of my close peers um, who um, is a seasoned mama, because we're not going to use that that uh, ages language with her. But she has nursed not only her children, but her grandchildren. When her daughters were not able to to feed them, she stepped in and she she held her family down. And so there are ways that we as a community can reshape how we see ourselves, particularly breasts. For those who acknowledge breasts, it is not breasts should not be sexualized. And again, white men have sexualized breasts in this country. If you look at other uh, Western nations, if you look at countries in Africa and countries in Asia, breasts are seen to do what it is, which is to produce milk and feed babies. That's it. Here, the sexualization, particularly with our community, is what's creating the harm and just fear of women in our community from even attempting to try nursing because they're afraid of being shamed. Yeah. That's crazy. And I just, just, just so that I, I witnessed a conversation. We were in a shared office and I witnessed a conversation from a mom to be to, you know, a mom that has a, I think maybe a one year old and, you know, she like did not mince words. She's like, look, if you have trouble, let me know. What's up, little man? Well, no, young lady, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but um, it, it was she did not miss where she was like, if you if you need like I, I she's like, I have an abundance frozen in the freezer. If you ever need it, let me know. And I, I was like, I mean, I was taken aback a little bit because that was the first time I ever heard someone offer their their milk to another person um, that they just work with. Uh, so I was I was a little taken aback, but I mean, uh, I mean, it, I, it makes sense, yeah. you know. Tiff, you want to hear something? No, I think Maya's muted. She was I'm trying to get off mute and I, I can't. Um, yeah. I mean, if you have a close family network, mm -hmm. join in, you know, it, it's, it's totally fine. Again, communities around the world do it. It's safe as long as you know the person and, you know, you do your research to make sure that everything's OK. Sometimes um, there are women who overproduce. And so if you ever see on Facebook folks with these uh, freezers full of milk, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's not necessarily natural. Uh, it's a blessing to those that can't um, produce at that capacity. Um, but a lot of those women give away their milk all the time. Um, I'm even now seeing women who have children who are like an elementary age now kind of stand up, you know, almost like Rosie Mommy the Riveter and just kind of be like, if I need to relactate to feed black babies in this community, I'm going to do that, you know? Um, so it's so, definitely possible. So can I, I, I'm asking from a place of ignorance because I don't know how, how, how does relactating work? So it's definitely a process. It's not anything um, that takes, uh, like not going to take overnight. Sometimes medication is a requirement to kind of get things set in motion. Uh, but it's really just getting your breasts going, pumping and going. 
um, making sure Mommy, that you are, have... I hear you. Thank you. Making sure Mommy, that you work yeah. with a lactation yeah. consultant um, to to get you on a plan because a lot of it is lifestyle. Like when Sam was saying, like I, I was struggling because I had to go back to work. It's definitely not going to be easy for the folks who um, have to go back to work. Because you're going to need time and dedication to get your milk books back up and going. But if you have the free time and labor to do it, um, speak with an an IBCLC and a medical provider, and they will help you get back in motion. Because think about it. For folks who um, have had breast augmentation, um, if they have any uh, are trans community folks who may have removed their breasts in some capacity, um, all of that sometimes can um, be damaged. Mommy, mommy, so people have to think about mommy, other ways in which milk um, can be produced for folks. And some of it, it does take a little bit of time and dedication to get it back going. But it is very much so possible if people are dedicated to doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think it's important to understand, like when we are passing these messages along on social media, you know, not not every person or not every child uh, specifically is able to tolerate cow's milk right like i'm a a firm believer um at this point in my life that cow's milk it should not be consumed by humans that's just me right i'll also say that i have a hard time giving up cheese but i'm not putting anything but almond milk in my cereal so baby steps um (laughs) But, you know, um, before we put these things out there, we have to realize that you can't just say, oh, put evaporated milk and do this because what, you know, there are certain allergies that these babies might have. And, you know, they might not be able to take certain things. And and again, it goes back to consulting with uh, a lactation specialist or a pediatrician. Um, And that that was the basis of, 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 of this entire uh, conversation for me is that, you know, there are other options, there are other alternatives out there, as opposed to just saying, well, we'll, 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 we'll put some cereal and, 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 and some chiral syrup in the baby's in a water, in a, in a bottle. Yeah. I, I wanted to add, I think that's a good point. A lot of people don't think about allergies. Uh, when we, when you have your baby and you notice that they're having skin conditions early on, mm-hmm. typically because it's the milk, it could mm-hmm. be your milk or it could be the formula that you are giving your baby. So I always advise my clients to take their child to an allergist because the pediatrician cannot do that. Mm -hmm. An allergist can find out what are the food triggers that are going to create disruption in your child's system. And I found that out the hard way. Um, My baby does not like peanuts, like Mm -hmm. at all. And we just thought, because we've been trained to think that kids are picky eaters, but they know their body. We just thought she was being a picky eater at the time. And it wasn't until we had a horrific moment that I could be in fancy and cooking a peanut fish and her face just blew up. You know, she was two years old. Her face just blew up because um, she was allergic to it. We kept like, we couldn't understand why she didn't like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Like all American kids like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. We just thought that it was. I still will bust down a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Oh my gosh. Whenever she would eat it, she'd be like, ah, ah, ah. And again, because we were trained based on white supremacy to think Mm -hmm. that it's our kids, that our kids are the problem, to think that it's something wrong with them and not maybe what we're providing them. That was like my wake up call where she's like, I I can't, I got to change my parenting. Yes. I got to change my parenting and I have to change my approach because what I've been taught to think about uh, parenting, uh, pregnancy, childhood, is not what it is. Like our babies know what they need and we got to kind of sit back and listen. And if we're just going ba- back off of information that people are sharing with us instead of doing the work, we're not doing our due diligence as parents to protect them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think, you know, we have to re- reframe the way that we think in, in terms of thinking that everything that was done uh, for us and to us growing up was correct, right? I had a, I was having a conversation over the weekend and I said, you know, I, I really want us to get out of the mind frame of thinking that just because uh, we were spanked when we were children that and, and we 
I turned out okay, Tiffany, like you just said. I turned out fine. Um, that it's okay to do that to our babies. But, you know, my approach and my thought is that what if there was a different way of doing things? You don't know if that approach would have worked and you still would have turned out fine or maybe even better. Just because you turned out okay and you were spanked doesn't necessarily mean that it was the best thing to do and the best way to go about doing it. And I think that, uh, again, goes back to white supremacy. Um, but it's something that we have to stop looking at the way that things were done in the past and automatically think that those things were right. I think our parents did what they did because they 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 they, they did what they did with what they had. Like they didn't have the resources that we have now. Now we have the same internet that we got this formula on about the Cairo syrup is the same internet that we can actually go on and do some real research. So mm. that's all I wanted to say. Um, yeah. We can close out. Um, Dr. Wiggins, you've been kind of quiet. You, any thoughts, comments, concerns? Questions? Yeah, I've been taking a lot of this in. It makes me reflect on my own parenthood journey, right? Like, oh, shoot. Mm -hmm. like, I, I was a victim to this white supremacy in my pregnancy and in early motherhood and like all those things. But I guess to close it out, my question, um, Maya, for you is for those parents who are struggling right now with the, with the formula sh uh, shortage, um, what are some things or where are some resources that they can tap into to kind of help them get through it? You know, cause who knows how long, you know, we're, we're right. in this place. I would definitely uh, check with your pediatrician's office first. A lot of times they will already have samples on stock pediatrician's office hospital. Um, I just read that, WIC is going to extend their vouchers so that way you don't have to just get that one designated formula that you had signed up for. So that'll open things up a bit for a lot of families. Go to a food pantry. Like there is no shame in it. A lot of times people will donate um, a formula at pantries. And then also look in parenting groups. Like right now here locally, all the moms who have samples that they couldn't use or um, their baby's formula may have changed. They're mm -hmm. giving it away. So wow. you just got to get on the ground, do the research. Um, there are things out in the community that's there. Um, if you are thinking about ordering online, I think like on Amazon, it's probably going to take a month for some stuff to get in. Go ahead and place your order. If you have the means to get it, just place your order and what about the change in the address to Canada? I've been seeing that. I was going to ask about that. that. I've been seeing that a lot. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't mean, know if they made that up or if it's real. You can definitely, I would, places like Canada, the UK, definitely change your address. You know, it's going to be a little bit longer for it to get here. But again, one of the things that I've just kind of noticed with all of the extreme buying that was happening during COVID, that people are planning and prepping. Mm -hmm. No matter what we feel like is going to happen or not happening, we have to be better as a people and be prepared for whatever, mm -hmm. right? Because the, the pandemic has shown us, like, if people get sick again, which COVID cases are rising again, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. Government is not going to help us. <laughs> the government created this mess, and we have to be a little bit, I, I hate using the word resilient, but we really need to be a little bit more empowered in making sure that our families have the resources that they need. Also looking at community-based organizations in your area. A lot of times they'll have diapers, they'll have whatever resources you just need to get to stay, you know, stay by. So stock up. I, I would really tell people to stock up, not in a sense of scarcity, but just making sure that if we have another shutdown, because I don't know if y'all have been seeing, like in China, they've been locked down for two months mm -hmm. now. Yeah, 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 like yeah. they can't even leave their neighborhood. The government's dropping everything off to them. When has America dropped off anything to us during COVID? Nothing but bills. Right. <laughs> so, you know, we got to be a little bit quicker and be more prepared um, to make sure our households have the resources that they need. And I would not try making any type of homemade formulas. Um, there's just different aspects of like protein and nutrients that need to go in there. Um, it's just not safe. It's not safe. Don't don't create it. Don't add nothing to what you got to try to stretch it. Mm -hmm. Just lean on people. Even if you have your church community, I'm sure there are tons of people in there that might have a sister friend or somebody that needs something that could help you find what it is you need. So like right now at my organization, 
um, we're partnering with folks to just start collecting milk. And yeah. so if people want to drop milk off, drop it off and we will send it to them. See, yeah. I just said the milk yeah. word. So here mm -hmm. she go. Yeah, <laughs> here she go. Um, so, yeah, we just want to make sure that people are making smart decisions and not yeah. making decisions out of fear, because when we make decisions out of fear, we actually are going to cause more harm um, than good. I was uh, in the grocery store before we went on and um, I was getting some water. We didn't have any water in my house. And um, the, the, the the big things of water, I was in Target, they were all gone. So there was a guy who was he was like, man. He was like, all oh, the water going. I said, yeah, man, you know, um, I don't know what's going on. I said, you know, it's a short. He said, yeah, we're in the end of days. I said, wait, what? He said, yeah, I, I didn't think I would live to see. I said, because the water is gone? <laughs> what, 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 wait a minute. Do you know something that I don't know? He said, yeah, man, the stuff just be disappearing and this the end of days. I, I said, okay, well, um, I'm going to get my little water and I'm going to go about my business. And it was nice talking to you. <laughs> but um, and that, I think that's twofold, like right. I think you know that that sense of panic that we have all experienced through COVID. Uh, it's a real thing. Like we all want to be prepared, and we all, you know, can be a little bit frightful of, about what is uh, unknown. But we can't let that cause us to make irrational decisions. And I think at the core of this conversation is that you know people are frantic because they they can't feed their babies. They can't get the things that they need for their babies um, and it can cause people to be irrational. What I don't want to see is, is one person post that they tried this formula online of the Cairo syrup and the uh, rice milk and unfortunately something happened. That's what I don't want to see. Uh, that's why I wanted to have this conversation because I feel like if we can do our part in the Black people parenting community to prevent something from happening, something tragic from happening, uh, then you know, this is a this is a, a an hour well spent. Yay. And and just to add a final thought, it's not just the Cairo syrup that's going around. There's a recipe that's vegan with hemp seeds. And I saw that one today. I saw that, that one today. That one is just as problematic as yeah. the Cairo. Um, again, just certain um, fruits and seeds don't have enough nutrients that is needed for the human body. It might mm -hmm. be great for an adult. But when you're talking about a little person and you're trying to grow, um, they're going to need a little bit more than that. So yeah, they do sure. have a vegan and vegetarian options such as soy. Um, there are other um, alternative options that you can look for as well. That are some options that are lactate free. So you just have to do the research and make sure you find the right fit for what's going to work with you and your family. Facts. All right, Sam, you got anything to close out with? No, um, this was great. This was, was a great conversation. Um, great, dis great discussion. Yeah. Great discussion. Um, so, yeah, Maya, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being yes. here. Thank you, um, Maya. Tell them, tell them your social media. Tell them how they can follow you, follow your organization, and all that good stuff. Yep. Um, it's Mame Inc. That's M A A I N. Oh. Sorry. M A A M E I N C. Um, and that's the same for the website is m a a m e i n c dot org. It's currently under construction right now. Get a new get a new look, but just hit the um, join the mailing list so that way you can get updates. Dope. And we're gonna actually have you on an episode for the podcast. We want to talk about natural birthing and um, all of the things surrounding that. So we'll yes. we'll, we'll, we'll connect with you um, a little bit later on. Sounds good. Nice Thank meeting y'all. Nice meeting you too. Thanks for having me. Her, her voice did not used to be this calm. Just let me tell you. <laughs> Look, that was using my younger story. radio it's, days. I'm a whole mom story. of four kids. <laughs> I got time for that. It's no. another story for another day. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, y'all. I'll catch y'all on the flip side. Thank y'all for checking us out. Peace. All right. Bye. Mm -hmm.